The ASICS Super Blast 2, a shoe that was never intended to exist but now does, so what has ASICS changed and have they been able to maintain what's special about the Super Blast? When ASICS developed this shoe, probably about two years ago now, I really don't think they understood that they had something this special. Obviously they knew they had something special, and we've now heard about the development process and how quick it was. And basically they took a plateless meta speed and they put the outsole of another shoe with some FF Blast Plus on it, and they realized they had something really special there. And they were responding to a brief from their pros wanting a FF Turbo based long run non plated trainer. Their marathoners wanted a non plated FF Turbo shoe to train in, and we're talking those long runs and marathon build. They knew this shoe would work great for that, and they were very excited about that, but I don't think they understood that this shoe would become as beloved as it became last year. And in the run up to the release of this shoe, the ASIC Super Blast 2, we've heard some further details about the development of the early days of the Super Blast. And it's been really interesting. It's filling in some of the details. Now, a lot of you have sent me a couple videos on Instagram. You've DM'd them to me. So if you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. And you ever run across this stuff, by all means, DM me. Because I make a point to stay on top of stuff. But I didn't see these videos. So it was really great to see these videos. But in one of them in particular, there is a senior innovation manager from ASICS talking about the early days of the development of the Super Blast. Not this one, the original Super Blast. And he said that this was a very sort of fast track shoe. It took about 12 months from prototype to, um, you know, putting out in production, you know, a shoe that people can go buy, which is very fast for a brand new shoe. But again, I really don't think they understood that they had something as special as they did. And over the course of last year in 2023, the Super Blast became one of the most beloved shoes in running. So ASICS really needed to get this one right, the Super Blast 2. And I can confidently say that they've done a really good job with this update. Now in this video, I'm going to be referencing the Super Blast 1 and I'll be referencing the Nova Blast 4. But I'm going to do deeper versus videos on each of these. So stay tuned. Those will be coming up on the channel after this one publishes. And if you're watching this a couple weeks or months from now, there'll be a link in the description to both those videos. But I will reference this shoe a little bit, but this won't be a comparison directly to this shoe. It says there's a few things I need to mention for us to talk about the Super Blast 2. Starting with the specs of the Super Blast 2, as you can see, not much has changed. This shoe is still 45 mil in the heel, 37 mil in the forefoot with an eight mil drop. This is about as max stack or super stacked as you can possibly get right now in 2024. The weight of this shoe has been a point a lot of people have been making a thing about in the reviews I've seen. It's gone up a little bit. So we're now at 8.81 ounces or 250 grams. Again, that's for the standard US men's size nine reference size that everyone gets. But as you can see here in the pair that I actually own, my left and right shoes come in below that. They come in at 247 for the left and 240 for the right. So it's a few grams. It's nothing you're ever going to notice. And I'm going to say that the weight that's been added to this shoe are quality of life enhancements that actually make this a much better shoe. And if we look at the performance of this shoe, this still is a super blast. It feels like a super blast. It feels very similar to the predecessor, the Super Blast 1. It runs the same. It does all of the same things. And I would actually say that this is a very energetic ride. And a lot of the ride comes down to FF Turbo Plus, the new super foam from ASICS. And it truly is a super foam. I'll get more into this in the midsole, but I will say that the ride of this shoe is very energetic. It's what you expect from a Super Blast. That has not changed. It's a little softer, but it's still firm. It still does the job. It still does the long runs. It still does really well. And if you love the Super Blast 1, you're likely going to really love this one too. What has actually changed in the Super Blast 2? Well, it's really three things. The upper, the midsole, and the outsole. That sounds like everything in the shoe, and it kind of is everything in the shoe, but two of them are quality of life enhancements, and one of them is a, is a significant performance improvement. 
Starting with the upper, we went from what was kind of a motion wrap, like one of their race shoes, the uppers you'd find on their Metaspeed series, their super shoes, to what I would now call a fairly generous soft training upper. It's an engineered mesh now that has a lot more breathability. It's not as uh, tight on the foot as the upper was on the original Super Blast, which I really liked. But for what this shoe is intended for, which is a long run trainer, I really do think this style upper makes a lot more sense. The details, the fit, the last of this upper, they're all basically the same. I went true to size in this shoe. I bought the same size in the Super Blast 2 as I did the Super Blast 1, and to me, they fit identically. The upper material is a little bit more generous, so it's a little less uh, tight on the foot, less constricting on the foot, but as far as toe box volume, midfoot lockdown, and the way the ankle collar and heel flare feel in this shoe, they're identical. And I think actually the ankle collar and the heel flare in this shoe are identical to the original Super Blast. The tongue is also the same, there's slightly more padding in this. And unlike a lot of shoes we're seeing this year, this has non-stretchy laces and they're actually really good laces. They're the same laces as the last Super Blast. So overall, the fit of this shoe I'm finding the same. I have been seeing people saying that they needed a size down in this shoe. I don't see that. I think for me, this fits exactly the same as the original Super Blast. In fact, the length of the shoe actually looks identical to the Super Blast 1. And the upper, again, isn't quite as constricting around the front of the foot, the forefoot, but it locks the foot down and everything fits as it should, similar to the Super Blast 1. And frankly, that's great. But since we went from a more motion wrap-esque upper on the original Super Blast to this woven engineered mesh upper on this, some of the weight gain of the Super Blast 2 is this upper. But it's a couple grams, and frankly, it actually works really well because this, again, gives you a better training fit for what this shoe is intended for, which is a long run trainer. Moving to the midsole of this shoe, we still have the same configurations and proportions of foam. We have FF Turbo Plus, ASICS's new Super Foam, which unlike FF Turbo, really is a Super Foam. It's at the same tier performance as the other top tier foams from Nike and Adidas are. Turbo was never quite there. It was always sort of one step below. FF Turbo Plus definitely is there. It's a great foam. And below that, we still have FF Blast Plus, but now we have FF Blast Plus Eco, which is a version of Blast Plus that I find much better because I find it much more consistent. I haven't really gotten on very well with FF Blast Plus, but FF Blast Plus Eco has been very consistent for me, mainly in the Nova Blast 4. And in this shoe, I'm looking forward to that consistency as well in this midsole. One of the biggest questions I had about this update was how was FF Turbo Plus, ASICS's new Super Foam, going to work in this shoe? Now, I always found FF Turbo, the last generation Super Foam from ASICS, just to be a little too harsh, didn't quite have enough resiliency, wasn't quite at the top tier of Super Foams. However, I have been running a lot in FF Turbo Plus in the Metaspeed Edge Paris. I have almost 100 miles into that shoe now which, by the way, there'll be a 100-mile review of that shoe coming up in the coming weeks, so subscribe if you want to see that. But based on my experience with FF Turbo Plus in the Metaspeed Edge Paris, I knew that that was a much softer foam, a much more resilient foam, and it truly was a super foam now that puts ASICs at the same level as Nike and Adidas with super foams. And in this shoe, I was really curious, did it still need the FF Blast Plus layer below it to kind of smooth it out? Well, I can confidently say that yes, FF Turbo Plus, even though it is more resilient, it is slightly softer, it does benefit from FF Blast Plus Eco below it to smooth it out. Because remember, this is a trainer. This is a long run trainer. So on those longer runs, the smoothness of FF Blast Plus Eco and the consistency of that really takes the edge off the super foam, off the Turbo Plus layer in the shoe, and just makes this a much nicer shoe for a training context, which is what it's designed to do, long run training. And it does it beautifully still. And lastly, moving to the outsole of this shoe, we now have ASICS grip rubber on the bottom of the shoe. And we actually have a tread pattern on the bottom of this shoe. Now I think technically, if you count all the surface area of the rubber on the bottom of the Super Blast 2 versus the rubber that was on the Super Blast 1, I think there's actually technically less rubber on this shoe. However, there is a, a pattern on the rubber 
and it is much, much thicker. And additionally, remember in the Super Blast, you had all these sort of rock catcher cutouts of the FF Blast Plus layer into the FF Turbo layer below it. Those are all now filled in. So the additional weight that's been added to the shoe that wasn't in the upper now is in this outsole. But this outsole is very grippy. This tread pattern on the rubber and the actual rubber compound is much grippier. I've run this shoe in wet, wet concrete, wet tiled sidewalk, which is very common here in Taipei. And I've had no problems with grip. And I've even taken this on some dirt roads and some very light trails, kind of more of a, a gravel access road. Something I would never have bought the Super Blast 1 on, and it did fine. It didn't pick up any rocks, didn't damage the foam, and the outsole gripped really well. So again, the outsole is some of the additional weight in this shoe, but everyone wanted more rubber and more grip on the shoe, and that's what ASICs gave you. So again, the couple grams, the 7 to 10 grams additional weight in this shoe come from a better upper and a better outsole which makes this shoe perform better and it's directly responding to what a lot of people wanted in this shoe. So that extra seven to 10 grams is something you're never going to feel on foot. And this shoe feels from a weight standpoint, identical to the Super Blast 1. So what does this shoe feel like on foot? Well, I'm gonna say if you ran a lot in the Super Blast 1, this shoe is gonna feel very familiar to you out of the box. In fact, a lot of other people and reviewers have been saying that the Super Blast 2 new out of the box feels like a broken in Super Blast 1. So if you ever ran in the Super Blast 1, you knew that it took 40, 50K to sort of get more flexible, move with your foot, you know, mold to your foot. And then it felt great after that. It just felt very consistent and very fun to run. And everything that people loved about the Super Blast was there after about 40 or 50K. Well, this shoe out of the box feels like that broken in Super Blast. And now that I have 51K into this shoe, I will say that it has been very consistent. It has softened up a little bit and it has molded my foot, but it still feels like a Super Blast. It does not feel drastically different. Now, as I was saying, with FF Turbo Plus, the new foam in this shoe, I was wondering how much softer this shoe would feel. It feels more resilient. It feels more bouncy. It's more uh, energetic to run in, but it doesn't feel fundamentally different from the Super Blast 1. It's kind of more of the same, just better. Now, throughout this video, I've been referencing the intended purpose of the shoe as a long run trainer. This shoe was designed and intended to be a shoe for a marathoner to use in their build for a marathon, really for those long runs of about 20K to about 32K, so about 12 miles to about 20 miles. Those are the bread and butter long runs for a marathoner. And that's what this shoe is intended for. This is a super foam, non-plated, long run trainer. This is not intended to be a daily trainer. ASICS makes a daily trainer, and that's this, the Nova Blast 4. Now I'll be doing a comparison between these two shoes and I'll talk more about that, but this shoe is never intended to be a daily trainer. I know a lot of people use it as a daily trainer, but it's not intended to be a daily trainer. I think that's really important because that speaks to really what this shoe is in my mind. And in my mind, this shoe is a super shoe. It's not even a super trainer. It's better than that. This is a super shoe. Just because there's no plate in this shoe doesn't make it any less super. In fact, I've made a video about my thoughts on the Super Blast being a super shoe. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go watch that. But with the Super Blast 2, this shoe isn't any different. I think if you look at this shoe as a super shoe and you treat it as such, it begins to make a lot more sense. And while a lot of people do use this as a daily trainer, I just think it's overkill. I think it's a little too stiff, it's a little too firm, there's a little too much resiliency in this shoe, there's a little bit too much going on in this shoe for all around daily training. Again, ASICS makes that shoe here in the Nova Blast 4. But I know a lot of people love this shoe and it is a very capable shoe of really everything from easy running into marathon pace a little bit faster than that. I think for really fast workouts, when you're getting into 5K speed and beyond, it's a little too much shoe. It will do it, but that's not really what this shoe is intended for. But again, I think of this as a super shoe, and that's exactly how I will be using it moving forward. And as a long run trainer or a super shoe, as I just said, this is a shoe that I'm probably not going to be spending a lot of time in this year because I just don't need this type of shoe. I won't be racing a full or half marathon at all this year. At best, I may be racing a 5K later this fall. But even that is kind of doubtful at this point. 
So I don't need a shoe that's built for running 12 to 20 miles or 20 to 32K very frequently. And this comes to my one criticism of the Super Blast, which is for the Super Blast 1 and 2, is that there's just too much foam in this shoe. Now I know that's why everyone loves this shoe because it's got that max uh, cushion feel to it, but that's my one criticism of the shoe. I just, if I run in this shoe too much, I just feel like there's just too much foam here. It works beautifully. It works surprisingly well given the size of the shoe. But running in this shoe, then really running in any other shoe just makes any other shoe, shoe feel like a racing flat. And I don't want that feel. I don't want to get used to running in this much foam all of the time. But when I do want this shoe, and again, for its purpose of long run from about 20K to 32K or about 12 miles to about 20 miles, this shoe is beautiful for that. It protects the feet, helps you recover. The combinations of the two foams in the shoe work beautifully for that. It is the perfect long run trainer. Again, it's a shoe that has no compromises. It will work for really anything. And I think that's why this shoe has become so popular because it does work so well, but it's just not a shoe that I need a lot right now for my running. So I will continue to pull it out maybe once or twice a month. I do intend to get this shoe to 100 miles, but it probably will be much later in the year when I do that. But every time I will pull this shoe out, I will be very purposeful and I'll be pulling it out to really enjoy that longer run or that feel of this non-plated super foam because it is excellent in this shoe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.